Imagine not eating for 44 days, that sounds incredible, right? Well, this is exactly what the famous illusionist David Blaine did in the year 2003. During this time, he lost 27 kilograms and his bone density dropped dramatically. But the really dangerous part started when he started eating again. But why is that so? Welcome to our video in which we explore the fascinating and vital topic of breaking the fast. During World War II, the people of Leningrad suffered from extreme hunger. For four months, they were given only three slices of bread every day, which consisted of wood pulp and wheat dust. Wood pulp, which is finely ground wood, was added to the bread to increase the calorie content. Tragically, some survivors died of heart failure when they were finally given normal meals again. How is it that eating after a fast can be so dangerous, while in other cases, like David Blaine, it leads to amazing recovery? In this video, we'll explore what happens during the crucial phase of fasting, reintroducing food. Fasting affects hormonal balance in a remarkable way. In men, testosterone levels were observed to decrease after a seven-day fast. However, after just five days of normal food intake, testosterone levels doubled again, although such a drastic increase is unusual. Studies usually show a moderate increase in testosterone after fasting. A study from 2000 examined U.S. Army Rangers training in extreme conditions. After eight weeks of hard exercise and little sleep, their testosterone dropped dramatically. But after a period of refeeding, their testosterone levels returned to normal. Although the drop in testosterone during fasting may seem worrying at first, the rapid increase that follows is equally remarkable and relieving. The key lies in a hormone called gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which starts testosterone production. Studies show that after prolonged fasting, the body becomes more sensitive to gonadotropin-releasing hormone, resulting in higher testosterone production. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone stimulates the release of luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone, which boosts testosterone production. However, in the studies, this effect is rather moderate and temporary, not a permanent higher testosterone production. The effects of fasting have long been documented. Already in 1913, Dr. Sergius Morgulis found that animals that fasted for a time and were then fed again gained strength and weight without gaining fat. Recent studies confirm these observations and show that young, growing animals in particular benefit from this catch-up growth effect. Modern scientists like Walter Longo have also discovered that fasting stimulates the production of stem cells in the body. These stem cells contribute to cell regeneration when nutrition is resumed. After fasting, protein intake is particularly important as they are crucial for cell regeneration. Protein plays a central role in rebuilding the body as it supports the production of the growth factor insulin-like growth factor 1, which is essential for building muscles and cells. However, moderation is also important here. Excessive intake of fat, for example, can put a strain on the stomach, especially if the body is not prepared for it. In general, the goal of resuming food after fasting is to get the body used to eating again, replenish reserves, and rebuild the body. Breaking the fast involves various considerations regarding the health consequences. Fasting can have both positive and negative health effects, depending on the fasting protocol and individual characteristics. Studies have shown that fasting measures such as calorie restriction, time-restricted eating, and intermittent fasting can protect against obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease by improving metabolic health. When fasting, consider metabolic differences in men and women. Women react more sensitively to fasting periods than men, which manifests itself in various aspects. A large calorie deficit, such as occurs during fasting, can lead to weight gain and menstrual irregularities in women. This indicates metabolic dysregulation. In addition, women are more sensitive to blood sugar fluctuations that occur during fasting. Fasting can also affect the sleep-wake cycle, which can manifest itself in disruptions to the circadian rhythm. These gender differences in response to fasting highlight the need for individual consideration and adjustment of fasting protocols. Caution is advised when starting to eat again after a long period of fasting. It is important to carefully plan the reintroduction of carbohydrates, as consuming them too quickly can be dangerous. People who abruptly consume large amounts of sugar or carbohydrate-rich foods may develop a dangerous refeeding syndrome. There are both historical and modern accounts of people becoming seriously ill after long periods of fasting 
because they ate too much fruit or other foods. An example of this is Upton Sinclair's reports. Although these examples are anecdotal, they illustrate the real risk associated with careless refeeding. It is therefore crucial to resume food intake slowly and carefully after fasting. In summary, fasting and subsequent resumption of food shows us the remarkable adaptability of our body. From reducing inflammatory markers to increasing hormone production, the right balance between fasting and eating can bring impressive health benefits. However, as with everything, it is important to pay attention to your body's signals. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to be notified of new episodes. We wish you a long, healthy, and happy life. Stay healthy and see you next time.